What's up, buddies? Welcome back to Data Driven MQB. Um, if you've been watching some of the shorts I've been posting in the last few weeks, you may see that I've been logging the vacuum at the turbo inlet pipe on these cars. So I found some very interesting stuff. Um, when running a vacuum gauge to this top port instead of plumbing the 034 TMD to it to run the Venturi um, and basically operating it as a basic retrofit, uh, found that changing the turbo inlet pipe, basically comparing my car to another very similarly equipped IS20 GTI, aside from the turbo inlet pipe and intake, caused a massive change in vacuum, which is seen by the PCV valve. This is a huge deal because the diaphragm inside operates based off of pressure differentials. So if you have a super weak vacuum in the PCV at wide open throttle, that means this valve is going to operate wide open, which is going to allow oil to pump right up and out through it. This is a picture of a stock turbo inlet pipe. You can ignore the oil because this was right after running with the test ventilated PCV valve that I drilled a bunch of holes into. Long story short, don't do it. Um, didn't see any benefits and actually did go through a quart of oil at the end of the day. If you look at the factory turbo inlet pipe right here, you'll notice that this little hump is immediately in front of the PCV connection. My best guess is that this is designed to create a very low pressure zone so that the PCV has sufficient vacuum to operate correctly. Um, the diaphragm and the PCV valve functions like a single stage vacuum regulator. If you have a really strong vacuum, that regulator is going to have to close further in order to keep the crankcase at its desired vacuum pressure, you know, vacuum level. If you have a really weak vacuum source at wide open throttle, the regulator is going to go wide open under spring pressure. And after some testing, putting the gauge on my car and a few other people's cars, um, basically changing the turbo inlet pipe causes a huge drop in vacuum at the PCV hose. And that is what seems to be screwing up the way that the OEM PCV works. I don't think that it's a problem that really shows up on the street too much, unless it's maybe like extreme cases or something. Um, but for the people who track their cars, which is what my original goal was to set out and figure out, you know, how to get one of these things to live on track, um, it's it looks like it's pretty vital. Um, how much vacuum it pulls is directly related to the amount of booster running, the amount of airflow you have. So it is entirely plausible that putting a bigger turbo inlet pipe on with a bigger turbo, you know, probably not IS38, but, you know, an actual hybrid pushing a bunch more power probably isn't that bad for it. And it works, you know, relatively okay, at least on the street. Um, as we saw in the last video, nobody really had problems unless they were tracking or autocrossing their cars. Um, Everybody who did have problems also had aftermarket turbo inlet pipes. So with that said, um, been wanting to get a little bit more concrete data than just, you know, driving around with that freaking gauge installed. So I've got a pretty cool little thing right here I've been rigging up. What you're looking at is we are taking the signal for the secondary air injection pressure sensor and I have a harness made by SC Skunk Works, nicely made. And what's going to happen is I have a sensor for the Mark 8 PCV valve, which is going to go right here. And we are now logging direct pressure of the PCV assembly. I'm bench testing it here so I can scale the sensor because I'm not 100% sure of the uh, voltage range. But essentially, we are now going to be able to log the vacuum level inside of the PCV valve to know exactly how much is acting on the uh, on the diaphragm, whether that is coming from the turbo inlet pipe or I'm sure it'll show up some on the uh, intake at idle as well. But this is going to make a lot more testing of the Venturi 
um, and turbo inlet pipes and changing all that stuff out a lot more effective being able to log it directly and look at the hard data rather than driving around with a freaking you know analog gauge I wasn't 100% sure of the scaling of this new sensor, so I went ahead and pulled a vacuum on it and compared the gauge readings versus the raw voltage readings so that I could map out the voltage versus pressure accurately. And this here is the finished product. All right, so right here is a sample of the data. Uh, I haven't had a whole lot of time to really look too deeply or do a whole lot of driving just yet, but you see right here is the PCV pressure. It's 2 PSI at the peak up here. The highest it ever actually saw was about 0.1 PSI, and that was like a little blip. Um, but generally it stays pretty low here. Um, the reason why it's all spiky, I found out after doing this initial logging that there's actually a mean voltage PID as well. So I'm going to actually be changing my pressure reading to go off of that because it's basically a factory smoothed value. Um, that will be a little bit more valuable to us rather than having to try and interpret these little spikes and stuff. But um, basically at the peak vacuum levels on the higher boost setting, we're looking at uh, average uh, PCV pressure of about negative six, or I'm sorry, peak of negative six PSI, average about negative five and a half. So that's about 11 inches of vacuum at wide open throttle. Um, we will come over here to one of the pools with the lower boost map. And right here on the lower boost map, um, it's an average of about negative 4.8 PSI. So it's just a little bit lower like we expected. One interesting thing I did notice is that the uh, values for the lower boost tune are a lot less all over the place. You can see it follows you know, aside from the jagged edges of the lines there, but compared to the higher boost pull right here, you can see that it spikes down, like way down on the initial spool when it's hitting, you know, let's see, 23, 24 PSI. And then, you know, it mellows out and it has another little dip right here, which actually coincides with the variable valve lift switch over. So there might be something to fiddle with there. So all in all, this is going to be something pretty neat and I'm looking forward to uh, testing it out some more. I uh, hope you found that helpful. Um, go ahead, check out www.datadrivenmqb.com. Follow Data Driven MQB on Facebook. And since you're watching this on YouTube now, give it a like and a subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, basically the next few months are probably going to be a whole lot of data gathering, a lot of mixed matching of parts, getting together with a few different people with different turbo setups, different cars, trying to basically get as much information as I possibly can so that we can kind of get to a conclusion on this little journey that ended up taking way longer than I thought it would. So till next time, take it easy.